Hello, welcome today. We're going to be talking about how to build a subframe for a decking area. Now, if we talk about a few of the essential tools that you will need for this job, if we come over here, Nathan, we can talk about them. Impact driver, batteries, of course. And with that, you're also going to need your charger. I know it sounds a little bit daft, all this and a bit, you know, obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people forget the charger get halfway through the day and they've got nothing to charge the batteries with. Then we're going to need your set square and we're going to need your angle finder as well, just in case. Always handy to have that as well. Now, an essential piece of kit, I feel is the chop saw and the stand. You can get the long pieces of wood on it as well with the laser and you're getting precise cuts as well. But the most important thing in the repertoire is the old pencil, of course, and not forgetting the tape as well. So they're the essential tools that you are going to need. Now, when we're building a deck, we're building the deck and basically this is going to support the deck boards. In this case, we're using, if you just come down, Nathan, we're using this lovely composite here that we're going to use, and it's a solid deck board as well. Um, Next thing, we're going to be using the timber. The timber we use is always C24 graded, tantalized, pressure treated timber. Now, when we're building the deck frame, what you'll notice is we've got the joists run this way to take the board that way, as you can see here. And the joists measure 400 mil centers. Can you just have a quick look at that, Nathan? There. So there you go. 40 centimeters, 400 mil, or approximately 18 inches. In between each of the joists here, we have got what we call the noggins. Now, as wood is a natural product, it can twist, turn. You can get shakes in it, which are basically splits and cracks and things like that. So the noggins basically bind the frame together and keep it stable. It just gives you that bit more oomph in the framework as well. More durability and strength. Now, as you'll notice, this is the timber that's treated. It's got a slightly green coloration to it. And that's because of the tannolith that's in the wood, which preserves it. Now we coat all our subframe in a minimum of two coats of bitumen primer. Now, of course, in England, it absolutely rains all the bloody time. So you do need to just give, in our view, especially with the hardwoods, which can last 25, 30 years, or products like your Trex and your millboard, they, you've got 25 year warranties with them. And although we are using a C24 graded timber, which is the, you know, the best quality timber for this job that you can use, we do like to give it an extra bit of help. The most important part to treat um, of the subframe of the deck are the end grains. And the reason is, when you're putting that through, your chop saw through it, you've basically got an unprotected end here because the tanner lift basically penetrates the wood by about 10 mil all the way around. So you've got untreated wood here. End grain, very, very important to treat minimum of two coats. I'd even go three with the bitumen primer, same as what we've used on the deck. And the top rail are always the first parts to rot. End grain, top rail. But we go the whole hog, we give everything a minimum of two coats, as you can see. Now, another thing that we do is we put the geo textile weed suppressant membrane underneath. And what this does, it stops all the weeds coming through the little gaps in between your decking boards. Nothing worse, six weeks down the line, you're sitting out for your G&T and you have got the weeds coming through the joints. We don't want that at all. Now, so when we have built the framework, we then need to support it on stilts in this case, which secure it to the ground and keep it firm and stop it moving. What we tend to do, if you can just have a look over here, Nathan. 
is when we've concreted it in the ground, we add to the last part of the mix some waterproofer to the mix. That stops the, the concrete absorbing water and helping rot this. Posts, whether they be for a fence or anywhere, always rot first where the ground meets the bottom of the post. So what we do to counteract that is we slope away. I think you can just see there, can you see there? We slope away the concrete, away from the post. The water comes down the post, runs straight off. That prolongs the post a lot longer than what you think. Obviously it's got the bitumen primer on as well, but the water falls away. And of course, with it being waterproof, it doesn't penetrate and doesn't help hold the water, therefore rotting it here at the base. And of course, again, end grain always pointed and on a slight angle as well. Now, when we've built the frame and we've got it in position, we need to wedge it up and we need to get a level across. Thomas, could I just borrow your level a second, please? Could you just whip it over for me, please? Right, yes, please, pal. And what we're going to do, we, you never ever lay a patio or a deck completely level. You want that water to run off. Thank you, Thomas. So what we do here, as you can see, where the bubble is there, can you just see that, Nath? Yep. We're just over the line of the bubble, so this water is gonna run off that way, which means it isn't going to settle on the deck, it isn't gonna settle on the subframe underneath, the water will just run off. And don't forget, you can't see this, what we call a fall on the deck, where the level's going that way. You can't see it with the naked eye unless you're in the trade yourself. So that's another tip that we want you to see. Now, this is a really, really big one. If you've got a square deck, like you've got here, you want to keep it square. Now, the reasons are, if your deck isn't perfectly square, if you're boarding from that side, laying your boards this way, when you get to here, you'll have a big wedge shape there. So it won't take a full board. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a way around it. You can pack it out here or there, depending where it is. But you want to get it right first time and, cut and make yourself not make yourself any more work than you need to do. And the way you square up a subframe is you measure from corner to the corner and take the measurement. Say for example, it's 3.2 meters. So if this axis here is 3.2 meters, your other axis here needs to also be 3.2 meters. You might need to just, it might be like a little parallelogram, your, um, your framework. So you might just need to play with this a little bit and just square it up. Once you've got it square, you can then put a brace screwed from corner to corner there, from corner to corner there, corner to corner there, and they're only temporary braces to hold it in square. You can just take them out with the screws at a later date when the concrete set and the frame is completely square. Now, that is my top tips for building a square framework for a deck.